In this video, we are going to create Kogo points using points creation tools. There are a lot of ways to create Kogo points in Civil 3D, so we will be using only a few of the basic tools. As you become more familiar with the Civil 3D functionality and how it can solve your design tasks, you can explore the other tools on your own. There are two ways to access the point creation tools. The first is through a context menu for the point collection in Prospector, which displays a toolbar containing drop-down lists of commands for creating points. These same commands are also accessible by opening the Home ribbon tab on the Create Ground Data panel, where a points menu displays the same tools as drop-down lists. If you select any of the point creation methods, such as manual creation, the same panel will open. The lists are identical except for a few special commands, such as Create Point Group, Create Kogo Points from Corridor, Create Blocks from Kogo Points, Convert Land Desktop Points, Convert AutoCAD Points, and Replace Softdesk Point Blocks. Now the command to create points manually is active. The first step is to specify the location of the point by clicking in the drawing. Once the coordinates of the point have been fixed, the next step is to provide a description. I will disregard the previous request and move on to the next one, which is defining point elevation. You can input a numerical value and press enter to display the first point on the screen. Please note that the program will prompt you to determine the next point's location, and the command will not terminate until you manually stop it. Suppose you want to create multiple points on the contour. In that case, after entering a description and pressing enter, the program will display the point's elevation since I use the object snap. I can confirm it, and this is the line level. I then indicate the new location, and since the program remembers the previous point's description, I can expedite the process by confirming it and entering the elevation. By doing so, I can significantly speed up the point creation process. When I end the command by pressing the escape key, points appear in the drawing. These same points are also listed at the bottom of the prospector. What's important to note is that a group named all points is automatically created for the points that I've created in the drawing. This group includes every point created in the drawing, regardless of whether it was created manually or imported from point data. It functions as a kind of database or storage for all the points in the drawing and every Kogo point is included in this group. Of course, there can be more point groups in the drawing and in the next videos, we will talk about the ways of creating groups of points, why they are needed, and how we can manage the visibility and displaying of points belonging to different groups. For now, let's remember that the All Points group contains all the points that we have. As I have already mentioned, there are a lot of ways to create points, and they are named so that it is possible to understand from the tool's name how the point will be created. But if a short name isn't enough, just hover over the command you want to use, and you'll see an extended explanation of how the point will be created. For example, the on-grid tool can be used to create points on a surface. The tool's description states that it creates a grid of points within a specified surface that is automatically assigned surface elevations. If you need more guidance on using the tool, you can press the F1 button to access the program's help section. Now, let's explore another tool for creating points. First, I'll remove the points that were created using the previous method, and then I'll show you how to create points on a polyline. To do this, you'll need to specify a base elevation and choose a polyline. The points will be created automatically. To add points on a segment, we can use the incremental distance command. Firstly, I select the first point and confirm the elevation, then I choose the second point and confirm its elevation with the enter key. In this command, there are several options available to calculate the elevation, which we can choose from. For instance, I confirm the elevation value of 15 meters. Next, I specify the incremental distance to add points. Let's assume we want to add points at every 50 meters, so I enter this value and specify that there will be no offset, that is, the offset is zero. I confirm my entry by pressing the Enter key, and the program automatically creates points at intervals of 50 meters. Let's assume that we also need to work with the elevation. We can change the elevation value at a specific point, in this case, point number 2443, using the interpolation command. First, we specify the elevations of the two adjacent points, then enter the number of new points we want at that distance. For example, let's say we want to add four new points without any offset and using the same description as before. As we add these points, we can see how the elevation changes at each new point. Manual point creation using this tool is another way to modify elevation values. Let's try the opposite task of creating Kogo points first, and then drawing a polyline through them. To accomplish this, I'll use the angle command. 
With this command, I can create coordinate geometry points by entering an angle and a distance. I start by selecting the first point, indicating the angle direction, entering the distance, adding a description, and specifying the point's elevation if necessary. To continue creating points, I need to establish a reference line. I select the previous point, input the angle value and distance, and then double press enter to keep the point description while skipping the elevation entry. To create the remaining points, I input the angle and distance values each time and double click to confirm that each point has the same description. Depending on your preference, you can change the direction of the angle to be either clockwise or counterclockwise. Here are the resulting points. Now, I want to draw a polyline that goes through all of these points. I use the polyline command and specify the starting point. Instead of clicking on each point in succession, I use a transparent command. This command allows me to draw the polyline automatically by entering the numbers of points, without ending the polyline creation command. Once I've finished inputting the numbers, I end the transparent command with the escape key. Since the main command for polyline creation is still active, I choose the option to close the polyline. 